By day, I'm a creative director at a publishing tech company in Austin, Texas. But outside my professional career, I create projects that focus on empathy, design, and culture. But the road to becoming a creative director has been a little bit all over the place, including running a magazine about the city of New Orleans, hosting a conference, and doing communications for an arts high school. But it's the combination of these skills that really got me to where I am. In this video, I will cover five things I learned in my creative journey from junior graphic designer to creative director. Number one, define a vision for your life, but be okay if it does not go to plan. I decided I wanted to be a creative director when I was eight or nine years old, and Eddie Murphy is the reason why. It's actually kind of silly. I watched the movie Boomerang. You, you've heard of it, right? Basically, the story of an all-black agency in the 90s. So we have all the biggest actors of the time. We've got Robin Givens. She's the director of accounts. We've got Holly Berry. She's an art director. And there's Eddie Murphy. He's the creative director. And the storyline is all over the place. And in retrospect, as a little kid, that was totally inappropriate for little Justin to be watching this misogynistic movie where he literally treats women terribly. But the important part is that I knew exactly what I wanted to be at an early age. Age. And I think if you look back at your early life, oftentimes you already knew what you wanted to do for a living. So I enjoyed making art, of course, but I knew early on that I wanted to lead the people that made the art. And I had no idea what that meant or how I would get it there, but Eddie Murphy was the catalyst. All I knew was that I needed to learn everything I could about the visual side of creativity. So I drew and I, I loved drawing and making comics. And in high school, I took AP art. And I liked that a lot, but I didn't love it. And then I got my first PC and it was life-changing. Illegally downloading Photoshop helped me to make flyers and I fell in love with this thing that was more than just making art. It was combining text and words into something that was magic. Number two, start with an expertise, then become a jack of all trades. So there's this diagram originally concepted by Tim Brown from IDEO that explains the way you should think about your skills. So let's say you're looking at an uppercase T. The top of the T is you knowing a little bit about a whole bunch of things. And then the bottom of the T, that vertical line, that's your deep experience into one area. There's value in being a generalist, of course, these days, but it's having that deep knowledge that sets you up for success. So in college, I started as a business major and then I switched to visual arts and then I eventually landed on graphic design. Um, a short little tangent, I went to Loyola and their graphic design department was incredible because I learned so much about being a total visual creative. We took all these art history classes and bookmaking and printmaking, and sculpture and painting, and then three semesters of practical design and then three semesters of conceptual design. And so I love feeling like I knew all these things. There is power in learning graphic design and I chose it because it was a type of job where I knew what I had to do to bring ideas to life. So many people talk about things and when they're just words and ideas, they're nebulous floating around in the air. But when you start writing those ideas down, they become a little more real. And then you build a logo and it becomes even more real. And then when you launch that website, all of a sudden it's a business. And being a designer, I knew I could make my own logos, I could build my own websites, and me having years of experience in this task added this kind of layer of legitimacy to anything I wanted to start. Most importantly, I didn't have to pay someone to make my vision become a reality. But also, I needed a lot of knowledge in a lot of other areas, so I focused on marketing and psychology, writing, music, business, and I felt like if I knew something about these things, even if I wasn't an expert, I could be a better graphic designer. And if I was a better graphic designer, then ultimately I could be an incredible creative director. So in many ways, I took the normal career trajectory. My first job out of college was as a web and graphic designer for a small black owned marketing company. And I learned how to manage clients and how to create under pressure, like a lot of pressure. And the big key learning was web design. I'd taken one class at school, but this was my opportunity to really make those ideas come to life and do things on a slightly larger scale. I learned the basics of CSS. I went through all these books and then I got into WordPress, building sites for clients. It was beautiful and challenging and one day, I'll tell you about how everything blew up and I ended up having to get a job at Urban Outfitters. 
Uh, so anyway, I land a job at the biggest ad agency in New Orleans. It's called Peter Mayer. And if you're in advertising in NOLA, um, you've either worked there or had somebody you know work there before. I loved it. And I learned how to become precise how to deeply pay attention to detail, and most importantly, how to clearly communicate my ideas without fear. This was a true ad agency and my first taste of my dream. We built print ads for TV and commercials, and it, it, my job was mostly just resizing ads. You know, I resized so many ads, but it taught me how to be a fast designer. And as I grew, I got bigger and bigger opportunities culminating in my idea being chosen for rebranding New Orleans tourism after Hurricane Katrina. So I created a logo, a brand book, a new tour guide, and lots of ads. And I even got to do two TV commercials. And so I'm in my annual review with my boss and he says, what do you want to do in the next five years? My answer, I'm not sure how long it's going to take, but I want to be a creative director. That's why I'm here. I want to lead teams now, I was only 24, and that is not the thing you say to your boss, but he goes, stay with us 10 to 15 years, and you just might be a creative director one day. And he was a super supportive manager, and he was saying the best thing he could, but like, 15 years, bro? Nah, that's way too long. That's the part of the romantic comedy where the couple you're rooting for has this big miscommunication, and they end up breaking up. Actually, that pulls us to point number three. Self-initiated projects lead you to the most growth in your business. So my boss says it's gonna take me 15 years to become a creative director and ain't nobody got time for that. That week I launched Invade NOLA, a culture, a culture magazine about the city of New Orleans and this kind of changing millennial scene. Uh, I had been blogging actually for a really long time, but it was usually just general pop culture. And I really wanted to tap into this cultural renaissance that was happening in the city of New Orleans. Basically, they weren't talking about the young and upcoming creatives and I saw an opportunity. And especially because I was working on a New Orleans tourism, it was like, we're not talking about the city that I know and love. I wanted to do something authentic. I wanted to do something that felt like it was the real New Orleans, the New Orleans I fell in love with. So I blogged and I found writers and photographers. It was a whole thing. And at its height, we were posting three posts a day and getting tens of thousands of visitors a week. And it was, it was huge, but it was also, you know, it was an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to create community. Uh, I did it for six years and it was primarily digital, but we had a blog and a newsletter. We published a few print publications and hosted a ton of events. And creating this project taught me project management and sales and how to manage creatives, how to encourage and how to give feedback, how to push and when to let go. It also thickened my skin and helped me to give critical feedback and be kind and it gave me the confidence to start my own freelance business. Then starting my own design studio led me to becoming creative director at a social media ad agency called FSC. And that led me to being a creative director at a B2B ad agency called Springbox. And moving from the B2B agency uh, to the tech publishing company that I currently work for. All of these steps in my career taught me the next big lesson. Number four is probably my biggest advice. Literally everyone is just making it up as they go. You can have all the experience in the world and still really not know what you're doing. Uh, they don't talk about this enough in college. They definitely don't talk about this on Twitter enough. And it never comes up at those big conferences or in YouTube videos. Everybody is winging it. You do the best you can with the information that's available. You listen and you try and sometimes you make big mistakes, but you learn and then you try again and then you adopt the things that you learned and you get better and you get better and then you get confronted with new challenges you never expected. And then the cycle continues and continues and continues. That's career growth. That's having the confidence to step into any situation and trust your gut and your capacity to figure it out. That's leadership, to be honest, figuring it out as you go. So. When I started my design studio, I was forced to level up because I had to do my own sales. I had to get confident managing contractors. I had to be my own account executive and make sure that clients were happy. 
And then at the social media marketing agency, I had bigger clients and bigger projects and use those skills and expand it in other areas. And now I'm learning about social media and search ads and leading strategy sessions and selling bigger projects and producing video. I was even the interim president and that is gonna be a whole nother video at some other time. Uh, but when I moved to Austin, I met a bigger agency with bigger budgets and greater expectations. And instead of working with hospitality companies like I was used to in New Orleans, now I'm working with business to business companies like Planful and Amazon Business. And it's the same skills for sure, but the stakes are higher. Learning how to be more of a consultant, crafting better presentations, uh, learning to wine and dine clients. The point of it all is that regardless of the experience, there's always something new to be learned, something unexpected, something challenging that you will have to figure out. And that's the good news, right? Everything is figure outable. You do the research, you ask the questions, you listen deeply, and then you make the best decision you can given the information available to you. And most importantly, when things go wrong, you don't beat yourself up too much. You take the loss and you learn from it and apply it to the next thing you do. There's no magic book that has all the answers. It's just doing the best you can with what you have right now. Keep creating for creativity's sake. Your creative skills are your superpower. My career trajectory has definitely been interesting and it seems logical when I lay it out the way that I did, but there have been detours along the way that helped me to skip a few steps here and there. And you really won't know what you love until you try a lot of things. So I didn't mention this, but I got my master's in arts administration because I wanted to open an art gallery. Uh, and I worked at an art gallery and I hated it. Then I worked at a museum and I liked most of it, but there were other parts that I hated. And that led me to doing communications for an arts high school where I was kind of responsible for coordinating all of the marketing and getting kids on the news and doing tours, all of these freaking tours. I had a brief stint as a professional photographer, even though I am not a professional photographer, I will not take your photos. Um, and I co-founded a conference for creatives called Pursuit with these two incredible women, Sierra and Christy, shout out to you. And even today I have side projects. My, notes, my most notable one being So Curious, uh, where I share practical wellness tips to help you live a happier and healthier life. Recently, I, I launched a live audio show on Twitter called Create and Conquer, and I wanted to give you your invitation to create and conquer. I genuinely believe your creative skills are your superpower, but there's also this thing that happens with creative people where we're almost more afraid than other people, less confident with our skills, um, even though we have good taste, probably because we have good taste. And so we don't launch things, we don't try, we're afraid to put ourselves all the way out there. And then we kind of sit and let our big ideas just fester because our inner critic is louder than our confidence. We're afraid to do these things, afraid of failing publicly, afraid of living out loud. But with my whole heart, I believe that each of us was designed to create and conquer. Each of us was specifically created to make a small, meaningful impact with our gifts. Okay, that was a lot. And it's weird because I feel like I'm only scratching the surface, but this was my introduction. My name is Justin. And here are five things that I learned around my creative journey from junior graphic designer to creative director. Thanks for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, kudos to you too. You bomb. <laughs>